And so we finally legitimately get to rip off Gardaland. It wouldn't be a Chacho Park without the toilets. <laughs> Hello Gardaland. Do you want your fountain back? <laughs> now that the sightline is finished, this is looking really, really nice. Uh, I'm pleased with how this one has, has turned out. So look at the view that you get from down here. It's awesome, look. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to episode number two of Grove in the Gardens. We are legitimately ripping off Gardland because it won the vote. And guys, thank you so much for the response to episode one. It's just so lovely to be welcomed back. You guys are literally the best community I could have ever asked for. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So this is what we were doing in the last episode. Uh, we were doing tickets, turnstiles, chicken shops, gift shops, uh, all sorts of stuff, maintenance area. And you'll see that there's some stuff in the background. So we're going to get straight into the content. I've been doing some designing off camera and I can't wait to show you what's going on here. By the way, nobody has guessed correctly what's coming into this space, so keep your guesses coming in the comments below. Uh, it's going to be quite a few episodes before you find out what this is because there's a lot of research that I need to do on what is coming here. So what do you think this is going to be? So if you are familiar with Gardaland, uh, then you will know that this area here is the Peppa Pig area. Now, I am using very, very similar design, like for example, car riders, the same layout uh, and similar rides that are going into this area, but we're not doing a Peppa Pig area. I do want to continue the main theme into this, uh, into this area. So you'll see that we've got uh, rides that aren't so tall. They don't sort of breach the skyline as such. Um, and we've got some other stuff here. And then there's all of this. This is all a bit weird. Well, I did promise you that there were big things coming in this park and this is going to be the first time you're going to see some of those. Uh, so I, well, by the end of the episode, you'll know what all of this what all of this means and it's uh, it's going to be a lot of work. And you can probably already guess. Uh, hello, by the way, if you're in the Premier Chat, let me know uh, what you think this is, uh, what you think is coming in this area. But anyway, let's have a look at the actual kids area itself. So as I said, I wanted to have more minor rides going in this area. I didn't want anything too tall. I didn't want anything to breach the skyline. I certainly didn't want it to be overly visible from this sort of area. I wanted to have that poke through that you get with rides obviously it's, it's inevitable it's going to happen uh, and this is what I was saying in the last episode about not finishing this building so I needed to know what the skyline behind it looked like so I know how to tall how tall to build things and stuff uh, but yeah so this is a more kiddie friendly area um, I didn't want any kind of thrill rides in this in this area uh, so we've got the star flyer we've got a chair swing and we've also got the balloons so this is actually very similar to Chatterlandia let's be honest it's a very similar feel to the the area it's a very similar order actually <laughs> so hey it works in Jajalandia yeah, might as well do it again uh, you'll notice this area is flat though for now so and you've also spotted this bit as well um I I need to do some more stuff here right uh I, this people mover is only here as a placeholder ride at the moment I don't know if it's the ride I'm going to use for what I want to put in this area so watch this space you're gonna, you're gonna want to say stay tuned um, I'm totally over egging it but hey clickbait <laughs> so yeah no, these are just the rides that I've chosen for this area um I don't know if the queues need to be this long uh, I've just put them in for now because they are uh they're, they're there um and the, Egypt the Egyptian main theme, as I said, is going to continue into this area. I mean, there's not really a lot else I can say about this area until I start kitting it out. So I reckon I'm just going to shut up and get on with it. I'll see you in a minute. And this was the reason why I told you to stick around, because the secret is now officially out. We're on the side of a hill. Lots of terrain work has been done, as you can see with the hill that's going on here. Uh, you probably already worked it out, right? Because you're all pretty clever. Uh, but just to let you know that this bit at the back here, this is not going to get resolved uh, in this episode. This is going to be episode number three. And this bit at the front is going to be episode number four. I've got big plans for these areas. I need some more time and some more space. So uh, watch this space. Stay tuned. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to focus our attention in the middle here. We've got the uh, family rides and stuff coming together. And we've also got a golden eagle down the bottom here, which probably 
feels a little bit familiar to a ride that opened this year so i'm not even sorry for that uh, i've not done a theme makers talk it pass on any of this yet i'm just starting to get a feel for the area i wanted this whole area to be a little bit gardenland inspired as you already know uh, if you know gardenland then it's split into multiple themed areas and the Adventure in Mayan area is actually split apart. You've got like Blue Tornado that's in the middle and you've got a bit of a fantasy area. So you've got the front of the park, which is Egyptian and Mayan, and then it's this middle strip that doesn't make sense. And then at the back, you've got more Egyptian and Mayan. So I'm kind of going for that vibe here, but this is going to be the area that's going to be the Mayan area. And then this is going to be different. So... Just to let you know, that's that's my future plans. It'll all make sense, I promise. Uh, so we've got our family rides in here. We've got lots of flat rides going on. Uh, and I'm just starting the idea of the theming in this area. So I like the stucco walls. I've, I used this in Jeopardy Point, but I've not used it since. And I don't know why, because this is just the perfect wall. It's just got like a cap on it and you can color them. It's two color. And this is just perfect for the, for the Mayan Egyptian kind of theme. And then over here, I'm using the uh, the adventure pieces and some wooden pieces from Theme Maker's Toolkit just to create some fences with a little bit of a foundation to it. Really like how this is turning out, actually, especially when you combine it with a mulch. And, you can, and you'll see it in a minute where you can actually color it a proper yellow to make sand. And it looks really, really quite effective. So as you can see, I've got lo really loose around the edges and stuff that I still need to sort out uh, because I haven't done my full pass and stuff. This is just getting a feel for how the area is going to look. So this is a star flyer. Change the colors uh, and put in the queue. So the queue line has now got the fencing added. You can see I'm using two different types of fences. Uh, I, I did this in Raygate Lake quite a lot, where you have like a, an outside perimeter fence that's one style, and then inside the cattle pens and the queues and whatever, you've got a different style of fence. And then I'm also starting to think about the access point into this maintenance area. So I'm going to need to move this stuff and put a gate in because this is going to be a road coming in. And you can see here, this is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just starting to put out some of the vegetation and just get a feel for how the whole pathing is going to work in this area and whether I'm going to use the blocks and stuff. So that's what I'm doing here. The car ride itself, I don't want to make any more effort on this. I wanted to keep this simple. If you look at the Peppa Pig ride at Gardaland, that's exactly the same thing. It's nothing special. This is not meant to be highly themed. It's not supposed to be a star attraction. It's just supposed to be a kid's ride that people go on. Uh, and as we already know, that the, uh, the prestige in the game is way overpowered for the car ride. So I don't really want to toy with it too much. It is what it is. Just some foliage that needs to go in here just to break it up a little bit. And then just some decoration around the back here just to hide this back perimeter wall. But that's that's all it's, it needs. Inside the station it needs its theme makers toolkit stuff, you know. Um, electric boxes and all of that sort of stuff. So I haven't done haven't done any of that. But I'm going for this Mexican theme. I wanted to, to break up this Mayan theme a little bit with something a little bit Mexican you know with all the spiky things on the roof and that sticks out of the walls and stuff but again I don't want to make any more effort on this it's fine as it is it's something that the park would have thrown together as cheaply as they possibly could so we're going for that we're going for that theme uh, and then over in this direction we've got the balloons ride exactly the same thing this area wouldn't have much effort put into it it would just be a facsimile of an egyptian area the effort is going to be in the episode four stuff where it's going to be really highly themed think of fantasia land you can probably already guess what kind of ride is coming um so this is just going to be that idea of mayan so like for example they wouldn't have put all of these pillars around because you've got the queue and stuff back here there'll probably be queue covers because we are i think going to be dealing with a hot climate so this would have some queue covers that i'm going to put in and then of course we've got the uh, mulch that's being put down and i'm going to sc scatter some rocks around to make the perimeter of the actual area make a bit more sense so yeah, this is the this this is the idea. Exactly the same fencing, so it's got a bit of consistency with the rest of the area, and then of course the stucco walls that are just making it make sense. It needs a little bit of tidying up every now and again, but uh, I'm happy with how this is going to look. And of course we're going to be using the the blocks and stuff, so the pa as paving, so that's all going to make sense. Then we've got our chair swing. This, I've just taken the inspiration from Chessington, uh, so it's just a cattle pen that's in a bit of an L, and the pad itself isn't actually round, and that's kind of what I like. I, I like the fact that we're not actually conforming to the pad, and we did it in the other parks as well, because it, it all just makes sense. So this is again going to be blocked out with the paving, and then we're going to have the mulch and everything just to hide, uh, just to hide the blocks. But same idea with the fences. There's the fences. There's the internal fences, and it just gives it this really awesome kind of look. And I've started to scatter around just some random theming. The, the theme has got no 
it's got no relation to the ride. There's no connection whatsoever. It's just randomly thrown down because that's the area. Likewise with this dude. <laughs> Hello, mate. Uh, this dude's just here watching over everything. Serves no purpose to any kind of storytelling narrative. It's just there for the sake of being there. And it distracts you from the uh, from the warehouses that are behind because it's in front of you, right? So it'll do. Likewise with this guy here. It's only a sightline obs obscura. It's not actually there for any real purpose. Like if I wanted to make it a thing, I'd put it underneath the or over the track I'd put the track underneath it and all that sort of stuff I, I'm just not going to bother because it just doesn't doesn't warrant having that effort uh, and then we're going to come over to this way so uh, I've swapped out the ride I've ended up using the magic cats because it was the only ride really that fitted into this area it felt the most appropriate the uh, people mover actually didn't work it wasn't long enough and guests just weren't riding it they were just like oh there's no reason to use it which is quite right it's a transport ride so Makes perfect sense. The Magic Cats is the closest we're going to get on this one. This is not the type of ride that I wanted here. This is supposed to be taken from like the Lego Legoland Windsor, where you've got the uh, Sky Monorail or the the Foot Monorail or what the Pedal Monorail. I don't know what it's called. Um, Sky Ride, I think it's called. It's supposed to be like a, a an open, very open ride, very open track. This is very much not what I envisioned, but it'll do. And again, this is not meant to be a highly themed, highly interactive ride. It is just literally a ride that goes over an area. And this area at the back here, I wanted to be almost like it was a former area. There may have been a ride in here or there may have been something in here. And they've taken the ride out and then they've just repurposed it as a bit of a respite. Because this is downhill and this is downhill. And you're going to have guests coming up the hill and they're going to want to have some kind of a rest area. So you'd have a rest area here and a rest area here. So this is kind of repurposed. And then down in this area, we've got uh, uh, games and stuff. And I'm going to leave this one intentionally blank because, you know, they're budget cutting and stuff. So they've only got the three games running because these this probably still wouldn't be that well used. Right. It would be the beginning and the end of the day when people are coming and going from the park. So I wanted to leave this one blank, but these will still uh, have something in them. So again, it needs its fine details and stuff in here. Uh, for, in terms of the station for the Magic Cats, by the way, uh, again, no Theme Makers Toolkit done in here, but I just wanted to have this really simple Egyptian style um, building. It's not, again, it's not a star attraction. There's not a lot of money that's going to be spent on here. It's just going to have been skinned to make it look like it fitted into the area. No real effort put into it. If you actually, if we could age stuff, then this would be quite an aged building. This would be quite uh, run down, quite grubby, if you like. Uh, then we're going to come across this way. I've carried on the theme. It was actually the other way around. This building came first and then the Magic Hat Station happened. So this is the this is the original version of the Magic Hat Station, just so you know, even though I've shown you in the opposite opposite <laughs> opposite way. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted this to be really simple. What I wanted from this one is uh, the idea that you could walk in and walk diagonally this way through the shop. So it's not actually a shop that would close. There's going to be no shutters or anything because the shutters and everything are all in here. But I wanted this ability to have a 45 degree beeline to the Magic Cats through the shop. So I've, I've managed to achieve that quite nicely in this area and then from the front i just wanted it to be really simple i'm going to put decoration and stuff on the on the roof like i have done over on the gift shop likewise with the magic hats there'll be some decoration on the roof but this is the this is the idea uh, of the actual building itself then we come to the area pièce de la résistance uh hey how's my french <laughs> and it's a splash pad i've wanted to do one of these for so long but i've never really had the botherance to do it or the intonation inclination to do it because we're always doing with like dealing with uk parks where it's a bit cold and splash pads don't really happen but now we might be dealing with a slightly hotter climate this now formally makes sense so i've laid down some uh what they call patio slabs or some slabs that are down here just to create the outline and then inside you've got all of the usual crap that you find snakes and all this the mayan temple and Blair, whatever all of the stuff uh, but i'm starting to get a feel for how i want the um how i want the floor so this floor by the way is just the let me show you uh, it's just the firehouse roof um colored blue but the idea is that it's supposed to be the rubber flooring that you get you know the, the bounce flooring that you use in playgrounds so this is what this is supposed to look like and i've chosen this one because it gives that texture 
So that's the texture that you'd expect from the rubber flooring. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I just put in some vents as drains because of course it's a splash pad area. So you're going to want to recirculate the water wherever you can. And the water treatment facilities for this splash pad would be buried underneath the splash pad. Uh, I've not done it, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to go that mad. Uh, <laughs> but this is that you would find that the water treatment facilities are underneath the splash pad. And that's what would uh, that's what would treat it. And then I'm just starting to scatter around some stuff ready for trees and benches and, and all of that sort of stuff. So you'll see that you'll see that come to life in a moment. And then the last bit to show you is the ride down here. Now um, I am I am going to do some more work to this, but I'm not going to finish this in this episode because there's some stuff that's coming in here that's going to dictate how this is going to end up looking. But what I wanted to go for is a croc drop kind of vibe because if you've if you've been to Chessington and you've been on croc drop, it's just so fantastically themed really 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 good the ride itself is it's all right it's not detonator at thorpe park but the actual theme itself is incredible so that's kind of what i'm going for here this idea of it being a bit of a temple uh, i think i'm going to use some effects on here if i can i don't know if i'm going to make this taller I, I, it's, I just i've got so many decisions that i need to make but what i wanted to do for this episode is it just at least have it in here represented so it's on the sight line it's on the skyline so i can start to uh, so I can start to make this area make sense. Particularly as I needed this in place to be able to do the magic hats to know what space I had. Um, I'm not entirely sold on this layout. It might change based on what's coming in episode 4. But this is fine for now. So that's enough of me wittering on. Because uh, this has probably gone on for way too long. I'm going to have so much fun editing this one. Uh, let me carry on and I'll see you for the final update. Oh hello you naughty little skipper. I see you skipping to this point of the video. Naughty naughty. <laughs> I've been away for three months. I'm still weird. <laughs> I did promise. Here we go. So I've done as much as I can possibly do up to this point. I'm starting to run out of time for this week and I need to put the coaster in in the next episode to know what the back area is going to be. But I'll show you that in a moment. But this is the main area. Look at how much this has come to life. I am so chuffed with how this has turned out. It feels as warm and as cozy and as busy and oh, as I wanted it. I'm so chuffed. So we've now got a name for the Magic Cats in the back. It's called the Oasis Skyway. I'll show you what's behind there in a minute because as you can see, the foliage has really made this area come to life. It's the sightline obscuring thing that I wanted this to be to make it feel like an actual area. So it needs to feel like an oasis. So there we go, Oasis Sky Skyway. And then the, ma the splash pad, I'll say the magic pad, the splash pad that we've got here uh, is now all done. So uh, I didn't want to trigger it up um, or anything. I'm happy with the, the random triggers and stuff. But yeah, so we've got water splashes and we've got stuff happening and we've got decoration and people cheering and all sorts. It looks really good. <laughs> like people are interacting with it. Probably not as in the way that we intend, but hey, it works nonetheless, right? So yeah, it looks awesome. And the flooring itself, I'm really, really pleased with. Uh, I, this has turned out really, really nicely, like even down to the tile and the, uh, the the rubber matting and stuff looks so good. Like I couldn't have even made it better myself. Then we come over to uh, the food unit. TMTK has made the complete difference on this one, just the, the posters and the stuff that I've added around. And of course, as I said, I've put the decorations on the top of the roofing as I said I was going to. Uh, so yeah, this is now looking so nice. Just a real tip in here. These are not in-game, mostly in-game um, flowers and stuff. They're actually Theme Maker's Toolkit. It's, uh, I can't remember what they are, uh, Aloe Vera, I think, and stuff like that. Um, you can find them on the workshop if you've got Raygate Lake, Fundy Fun Spot, or um, the other one I did. What was the other one I did? Oh, Chachalandia. <laughs> if you've got those downloaded, you'll have these plants already. They are, uh, let me just show you. Uh, there you go. They're actually tabletop plants that had sunk into the ground so uh yeah just a little tip for you but what i wanted to do is make this feel make this area feel like it's relatively new so that's why they're all in like a perfect line uh, because they would be planted that way and then just let grow and over the years they'll just take over the space and they'll and they'll just grow so this is why you'll see that these are in a line it's done by it's done by design i want this area to feel like it's new uh so over to the star flyer uh, what i've done is i've just started to put some clutter on the back wall just so it breaks it up a little bit and then of course you've got the uh, the trees and whatever uh, that are in the background just to uh just to break it up a little bit um so yeah this is looking this is looking all right i'm i'm yeah it's okay this is not my favorite part of the area but it it'll do and over to the cars, as I said, I wanted to keep this bland. I wanted, I didn't want to put any vegetation in here, as it turns out. I just wanted to keep it as a bit of a desert. Uh, it's now called Desert Race anyway. Uh, desert 
races. Yeah, desert races. Uh, so we've got the queue and everything that's all sorted. What I've done here, by the way, is as you look through, uh, well, you can't really see it, but as you look through, I've put this wall of uh, rock in the background and I wanted it to blend into the rocks that are behind it to make it look like it's one rock face, even though in reality, there's the maintenance area in the background. So I'm sort of thinking about this whole sight line obscuring um, and I kind of, I kind of achieved what I wanted to there and then the tree came in and just ruined everything anyway <laughs> it's like oh fine don't, don't don't bother doing what a tree can do just as well <laughs> uh, and then we come over to <laughs> you're gonna see why i'm laughing in a minute because i'm such a child uh we've come over to the to the chair swings and i've called it haboob just because i wanted to say ha boob in a video and actually as it turns out it's the name of a mexican dust storm so i wanted this to be like a dust devil tornado kind of thing but i also wanted an excuse to say ha boob in a video <laughs> <Some child. laughs> and then uh over here we've got amelia's adventure i think i've used this name before it seems like such a cheap thing to call something uh, after amelia Earhart. but hey it's lazy that's not cheap, sorry, lazy. That's what I am, lazy. So we're going to call it Amelia's Adventure. Uh, and that's what I've done. And then I've just put the, the special effects and stuff, you know, the fire pits and whatever around it. This is looking really, really, really nice. Uh, and then I've just done some of the work along the uh, back here just to put some of the rock work and some foliage and stuff in. Some fences just to block off uh, the oasis what stuff skyway um and then i've lined the pavement as well with these uh well, these were already in i think in the last update i just didn't really talk about it so i've just lined the pavement with these uh poles and stuff uh, along here and here's that effect again with the uh, with the plants so they're all in a line and then i just started to put some undergrowth on the underneath just to break it break it up a little bit now what that does do though is it leaves me with a space <laughs> And I think a coaster would probably go in here. So what we need to do in the next episode uh, is the coaster that's going to go in this area. So spoiler alert, it's going to be a coaster. You know that already. Uh, and then whatever space I've got left, we might open up to do a coaster here. But let's just let's get there, right? Let's actually get there first. Uh, and then we're going to come down this way. So uh, I've just put some stuff in along here. It's just some viewpoints. I need to uh, finish this bit up. But I need to see what this is going to do before I actually make a sight line of this. So at the moment I've just put some benches and some picnic tables in. Uh, and this is the kind of vibe that I'm going for here. Where you've got the railway line that's running along the hillside, uh, and then you've also got the rides and stuff that are uh, that are down in the background, and you and it's going to go continue downhill. I want there to be a focal point ride here, so that's going to be either episode four or five, depending on uh, depending on progress. Uh, so yeah, I want a focal point ride there, and then of course we're going to be able to see the stuff from the. Um, coaster we're putting in in episode three over the back here so that's kind of well i'm going for there i haven't actually ended up doing anything the other side down here uh, i wanted to in this episode but it, the time time just didn't lend me to going down that way i've got no reason to do that area yet i know what's coming down there but i've got no reason to do it yet so let's just let's just move on <laughs> so uh, and then we're going to come down into this way Game stalls are all done, uh, so this is exactly as I wanted. The missing one in the middle here where they've just thrown some tat in there to go, yeah, it's fine, fill the space with whatever. Uh, and then I just started to do the games unit along here. So this one wouldn't be used as much as the others may have been. Uh, so we're just going for that kind of fill in a space with some monetized stuff. This possibly could have been a shop or it could have been something to do with the ride that f uh, was formerly here, whatever. Uh, it's just now a repurposed space. And then I've also put the sneaky... Uh, flower bed in here as well because i just wanted something to break up this big plaza space um and like this works quite nicely actually it kind of gives purpose to the snakes that i put at the beginning because i'm now starting to use them elsewhere and i feel a little bit better about having them at the front of the park uh, and then i've just got this grove in the gardens sign uh that's just in here as i said this area would have eventually or would have at some point had a ride here uh, and it's been repurposed in the worst possible way as a waste of space so this is kind of what I'm I'm doing with this. I'm kind of making some kind something with the space, but where this sign is would have been a previous ride, uh, but it's no longer there. So we we can make up our own law as to what that may have been. But I really really like this this whole area and how it feels with the magic axe going over the top. It just it feels complete. The magic axe actually draw the area in like I wanted it to. Of course, this area back here isn't done. It's not even remotely done, but 
it draws the area in it gives it a bit of a boundary and a bit of a border and i quite like how that uh, how that happens so uh, yeah it's just, it's a simple area it's simple by design and i think it's effective and i think that's a tree uh, <laughs> oh god my camera work uh, and then we come down to here so i've not done much more to this i've just put some foliage in um and just done the the like some of the fine details but it doesn't have a name it doesn't have any of its signage it doesn't have any of the special effects and stuff and that's by design uh, that's because as i said the focal ride needs to come into this area and before i can finish decorating this i need to know what this ride is going to be and how it's going to look and feel and before i can do that i need to do the roller coaster that's going to come in this area so like, it's a bit of a chain reaction that I need. But for now, I'm happy to say that this is how this looks. Uh, and this is nearly done. It just needs its final touches. It needs, like, some final details and, and final design. Uh, what I love the most, apart from the fact that it's giving us croc drop vibes, um, <laughs> it's the same flowers. And it's also a really intricate setup of a queue that's completely randomly placed. Like, I really like how this queue layout is. It's not something that I've really ever stopped to appreciate. But if you look, it's all... It's just not a cattle pen. It's a cattle pen without it being a cattle pen. Uh, and the fences that I've used, they're on the Theme Makers Toolkit. You saw me use it on the GCI uh, in Chachalandia. So I've just reused them. Because they're just the perfect wood fence. They're just so... They're untreated. You can recolor them. Uh, but they're just untreated. They're just this, this raw wood. Uh, and then in the middle, you've just got... The flowers and the and the trees and stuff. So I like how this is how this has turned out. The sight line is all right on this as well. Um, I have, by the way, uh, made it taller. So the ride was actually made a little bit taller, and then I shortened the sequence. So I, I've done a bit of balancing when it when it comes to the uh, comes to the old ride sequencer. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the area. I'm just going to go back to the splash pad because I really like how. Look, oh, it's just such a no way. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good sight line. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, just, yes, this is exactly as I wanted it to look. I'm really, really chuffed with this. So, guys, thank you so much for getting to uh, the end of this episode. I really do appreciate um, you getting to the end. I really do appreciate all of the support and all the love that you guys share every single time, every single video that I put out. So, thank you for being the most awesome community I could ever ask for. Uh, so, guys, until we speak again, I will bid you a goodbye. Please look after yourselves, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>